National Party leader David Littleproud visiting Mildura today. David, welcome back to the program and what's taken you to Mildura? Uh, yeah, look, uh, coming here with Jade Bennon, the Nationals candidate in the Victorian election, uh, to talk about health. Uh, well, I came through here a couple uh, months ago and really heard the health crisis here where our frontline workers in Mildura have just been let down. So the Nationals are prepared to put out $750 million uh, to build a new hospital here to give uh, our frontline workers the tools they need uh, to be able to, to care for people in here. And, and, I mean, this should be about not just Mildura. There's a catchment of 90,000 people across three states yeah. that need first-class health care, that can't get it and rely on Mildura. And, unfortunately, Dan Andrews has forgotten not just about people out here in Mildura, but hasn't thought about the broader need for health care uh, in northwest Victoria. So we're here to listen, to learn and to make sure that we can prosecute that case. And the only way to get rid of Dan Andrews uh, is, to, is to vote against him. And otherwise, you're going to get nothing and you're going to get the same results you've had for the last 20 odd years that Labor's been in government. So it's important that I'm here to support Jade uh, with Ann Webster. And, and we're honest about that. And we put forward practical ideas that'll shift the dial for people uh, in Mildura, but also for Victoria. Now, David, you've been in politics some time. When Labor doesn't run a candidate in a seat and there's a prominent independent there, what does that tell you? Well, a vote for an independent is a vote for Dan Andrews. It's as simple as that. I mean, you know, if, if you want Dan Andrews to stay, uh, then you just vote independent. Good luck to you. And all you'll get is a professional complaints desk that sits outside uh, and, in fact, uh, you'll get Dan Andrews with it. And so uh, you really get nothing. And, and this is the, the real choice that Victorians have to make. Do they want to keep more of Dan Andrews or do they want to get rid of him? The only way is to make the hard call and to, to get rid of him and to put a party that can actually be inside the tent, that can make the decisions, that can cut the check, that can cut the $750 million to build a hospital uh, to give you the, the tools you need to keep... Uh, our health work is going. It's as simple as that. It's not a tough decision, but uh, obviously we're, we're fighting hard and we're, we're going to have to try and convince as many people here in Mildura because if we win Mildura, then that's one step closer to government and one step closer to getting rid of Dan Andrews. Well, one person I suspect we won't see in Mildura is uh, Anthony Albanese. He's not even in Victoria. He's been overseas quite a bit over at the G20 and he's met with the Chinese leader Xi Jinping. You've also met with some Chinese representatives yourself. Yeah, look, uh, I, when I was Ag Minister, I reached out three times to meet my counterpart to try and work through dialogue. And dialogue is the best way to resolve any problems. And I welcome the fact that Prime Minister's met with the President of China. Uh, the Ambassador here uh, asked me to come and see him and start that dialogue as well uh, from uh, from uh, the Nationals' perspective. And I took that opportunity. And I've got to say, it was candid but constructive. And, and what I made it clear to him was, while we welcome dialogue, culturally what Australians want to want to be able to see and to believe in the dialogue is to see real actions. And those actions should be about immediately getting rid of the tariffs that they put on our products uh, to make sure that the words are backed by real intent, intent to show that uh, we can reshape our relationship. Uh, and when we get to other challenging topics uh, like the geopolitical issues of national security, then we'll have a better foundation stone to work from because they built that trust, that foundation stone, by removing all those tariffs uh, and allowing agricultural products to, to uh, flow freely. That'd be a first big step, and that's what I made clear to him. Uh, and if they're prepared to do that, then we'll continue to be respectful to them. Yeah, when it comes to those grievances or, I guess, the, the frank discussion or candid discussion you said you had, where do those grievances lie? Do they lie with our criticisms of human rights issues in China? Uh, well, it's a number of things. It's around the human rights. It's around the fact that we've challenged them on uh, the South China Sea, the challenges that they're posing in the Pacific, uh, as well as Taiwan and their support of uh, Russia in the Ukraine war. Uh, and the 14, the 14 demands that they've uh, put on Australia uh, and our sovereignty. And we made it clear to them that while we respect and actually have enjoyed their trade, there is a line in the sand that we will not cross. Uh, and uh, they need to appreciate that culturally, that we respect their culture. But if they roar across that line, then unfortunately we, there will be consequences. We aren't afraid to stand up. But the best way to resolve this is through dialogue and trade and open and fair trade and not using that as a weapon against Australia and our values. And if they do that, then, then the conversations we have around trying to resolve our differences on these other matters we'll have a better foundation stone to work from. But unless they show that intent um, and change those, um, those uh, tariffs, 
then it's going to be difficult for us to to continue to to work forward in a positive and constructive way. And when it comes to trade, uh, Anthony Albanese has been at the G20 speaking, amongst other things, of what Australia's contribution to food security can be around the globe. Uh, What are your comments on, I guess, the effort the government has made on food security domestically? Well, it just goes to show he doesn't understand Australian agriculture. He says that we're going to feed the world. Um, Let me just give him a little education in Australian agriculture. We're a powerhouse, but we can only feed 80 million people. We are not going to feed the world. So for him to grandstand on on the international stage about what Australia can do, yet domestically when he comes back he's doing Australian farmers over, whether that be... Uh, with going and returning back to buybacks, water buybacks, taking water out of the consumptive pool away from farmers to even produce food for not only Australians but the world, and then to to couple that with a nasty policy of paying for this water out of the the consumptive pool for farmers by taking away our future with dams uh, is just abhorrent. And then when you look at the, the other challenges that wouldn't cost the Australian taxpayer a cent, of instituting the ag visa, taking that away from us. He's not even giving the Australian farmers the tools they need to feed the world or even come close. So he's saying one thing on the international stage while he's doing us over here domestically, uh, and he shouldn't be using Australian farmers as a prop uh, to, to boost his reputation internationally. He should be fair income about it. He's, he's terrorising Australian farmers uh, and regional communities because if farmers uh, don't have the tools, then they don't spend the money. Uh, locally and our regional communities hurt because of it. So it's hypocrisy at the highest level and it shows his lack of understanding of Australian agriculture but also the impacts that his policies are directly having on regional Australia. Now he's mentioned dams there. You're, the National Party's former leader, uh, Michael McCormack, has told us regularly about raising the height of the Wyangala Dam wall. There seems to be this inertia across you know, the political realm at state and federal level to get these dam walls up, and now there's eye-watering amounts of uh, water going over the Wyangala Dam. Yeah, this is insanity. I mean, we put $7.3 billion, and unfortunately states of all persuasions, of political persuasions, have failed us. I've got to say... Um, this is an opportunity for leadership, not just to, to grow agriculture, but for mitigation. Um, and let me say, it's illegal. People need to understand that it's illegal for a federal government to pick a shovel up and to dig a hole for a dam in any state or territory. Under the Constitution, the states have to do it. And so what we've said is, well, we'll pay for it. You just go and burn the diesel and dig the hole. And unfortunately, it doesn't matter which state it is, they have just had this aversion to digging the holes to prepare for the future, not just to grow our future, but to protect us. And, you know, I think Australians are jack of it. And and unless the states actually step up and take the money or what's left of it and start digging some holes, I think there, there needs to be a look at what federally we can do if there's any emergency power that we can bring in and start digging in ourselves. And that may be, that may be changes to the constitution, but this is getting to a critical stage where we should have mitigation and we should be planning for the future. And we put the money there, despite Labor taking it away, but um, it means nothing unless you've got a state that are prepared to do something about it. And unfortunately, I've got to say, none of the states are. And when you see the toll of what's happened out of us not acting on lifting that dam wall uh, in New South Wales at the moment, then there's culpability that needs to be sheared at home and it needs to be a responsibility to fix it. That's common sense, and that's what the Nationals will continue to prosecute. Uh, David Littleproud, National Party Leader, I'll let you go on the campaign trail in Mildura with candidate Jade Benham. Thanks for joining us today on Flow. Thanks for having me, mate.